Hello and welcome to our watercolour journey. Today we're going to paint Open Plain by Heinrich Edgecombe and it's a step-by-step -step tutorial using a variety of surprising colours. So come and join us and let's get painting. There's a link to the original drawing in the description below and all the materials used, the paints, the paper, everything is listed down below. Let's look at the brushes. It was a Wahong number one Haki, the Princeton Mop, one inch, Silver Black Velvet number 12, Escoda number six, and the Art Secret Sword number two, and the Princeton Rigger number one. Let's get started. Right, for the sky colors, you are going to use raw sienna, cobalt blue, Viridian, Payne's Grey and Van Dyke Brown. Wet your paper properly only in the sky area. Make sure that it's wet from side to side only till the top of the mountains. Did you know that Van Dyke Brown was named after the Flemish painter Anthony Van Dyke? It used to be called Castle Earth or Cologne Earth. It is made from iron oxide and asphaltum and the mix was created to resemble the iron oxide rich earth of Kassel and Cologne in Germany. To form the base of our sky area we use raw sienna. It is a fairly light mixture of raw sienna and raw sienna is a really cool color to use here because it doesn't go green when you add blue not like yellow ochre or yellow. This one will retain its own color and actually make a very good mix. The next part is Payne's Gray and the black shade of Payne's Gray. You can use a rather strong mixture and just dab it in right at the top. Now we're going to use cobalt blue and notice that you don't rinse your brush. You keep the brush with all the previous colors because that helps to create a very interesting combination. Use a very light touch and just add the blue to your sky area. And can you see that the blue does not turn green? Isn't it amazing? Speaking of green, now we are going to add viridian to the sky. And I just said we don't want green, but the Viridian is a fantastic mixing color and it will really create the softest, most amazing sky you can imagine. Work very lightly. Viridian can be a very dark, dark green. So work lightly with it and just dab it in into your sky. Again, with the same brush, not washed. Okay, so now we are going to use the Escoda number six, and that is to lift out some clouds. Now, the paper is still very, very wet, so it's going to keep on running back. Don't stress, it will show. So at random, lift out some wispy clouds and wipe your brush on a tissue as you go to get rid of the excess moisture and the excess paint. Because only the top part of the sky was made wet, you can fill in little gaps with a very light watery mixture of the Viridian and just blend it into the rest of your sky so that it doesn't make hard lines.
It is interesting the wiggly motion. It looks like there's nothing happening. But once the painting is dried, you will see a difference. Right, and here is our one surprise, other surprise color. This is Van Dyke Brown and Payne's Gray, which is going to go into your sky to make the beautiful gray, stormy kind of clouds. Again, a very, very light touch, just dab it in. You are now going to let your painting dry naturally. Don't use a blow dryer here if you can. It might disturb the paint. But once it's settled a bit, then a blow dryer can work. But it's better to let it dry naturally. For the mountains in the back, you are going to use cobalt blue and Payne's Gray premixed. So make sure you mix it properly because the two colors can actually separate really beautifully and you are going to work wet on dry. You can add a touch of pure Payne's Grey and just let it run into the mix. Use the Payne's Grey to create shadows and definition in the background. Next up is raw sienna and you can start off with a fairly strong mass tone, strong mix and then wet your brush and use that strong mix and coax it down into the rest of the background there. Only up to your horizon line. So from now just use mostly water and you can just diffuse it into the background with the water. Remember that the colors dry back a lot lighter, so don't be afraid to use your colors. Again with a Payne's Gray and Cobalt Blue mixture, now you're going to add the shadows and the darker areas at the top of the mountain. The blue color or colder colors create distance. Little bit of Payne's Gray again, stronger mix.
and then Van Dyke Brown. What an interesting color. Some more Van Dyke Brown to add to the landscape. And for the rest of the landscape, you are going to use raw sienna, sap green, burnt sienna, perylene green, and cadmium yellow. Once again, you're going to let the painting dry naturally.
sprinkle a little bit of salt in the corners and wherever you want a little bit of texture and then let it dry. Now we're going to add some detail and it's mostly the grasses and it's mixtures of the greens and basically all the other colors that you've already used in the landscape. So use the rigger and start from the bottom of the page and just make quick loose strokes to the top and create your grasses like that. It is always a good idea to let your painting dry and look at it the following day. Um, Heinrich used white gouache to add highlights, but you can also use white watercolor, white acrylic, a white jelly roll or white pastel. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting with us and we hope to see you very soon again on our watercolor journey. Happy painting!